How the Sphinx Got to the Museum by Jesse Hartland. Thousands of years ago, a pharaoh ruled Egypt. This wasn't unusual. What was unusual was that this pharaoh was a woman. Her name was Hatshepsut. Many monuments and pieces of art were created in her honor. There were statues, smooth and massive, obelisks 100 feet tall, vessels and vases made of stone, bead-laden golden jewelry, and an enormous temple built in Thebes. Best of all, carved stone sphinxes. Medium, large, and huge stood guard in front of her temple. A sphinx is a statue of a lion's body, but with a human head. After Hatshepsut died, all of the beautiful artwork, including the sphinxes, was broken into bits and tossed into a pit left for thousands of years. Amazingly, the museum has one of the sphinxes and we are about to see it. In about 1470 BC, Pharaoh Hatshepsut meets with her architect, Sinenmut, to plan her temple and orders a collection of statues, including a set of six sphinxes. The architect's assistant takes down the order and delivers it to the sculptor, who sends his assistant to the quarry at Aswan to obtain a huge block of granite to bring down the Nile River to Thebes. Here is the sculptor working with mallets and chisels, carving the granite sphinx that was ordered by the Pharaoh Hatshepsut. Here are the Egyptian priests with Hatshepsut admiring the magnificent and massive brand new granite sphinx that was sculpted by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh. Here is Hatshepsut's stepson, Tutmos III, who becomes the sole pharaoh after she dies. Trying to erase all trace of Hatshepsut, he orders his workmen to hack and chop and destroy the statues of sandstone, limestone, and granite, and even the sphinx that was admired by the Egyptian priests, carved from granite by the sculptor and ordered by the pharaoh, and left undiscovered for centuries. Here, 3,000 years later in the 1920s, is the archeologist from New York's Metropolitan Museum. After years of studying books and deciphering hieroglyphs and combing through hot sand in the desert, he uncovers the pit with the broken pieces of dozens of statues, including the Sphinx that was dumped there by the stepson, marveled at by the Egyptian priests, chiseled by the sculptor, and ordered by the Pharaoh. Here is an ancient from Egypt's Department of Antiquities, which supervises the ancient site and decides the Metropolitan Museum will receive several statues, including the partially put together Sphinx that was found by the archeologist, smashed and cracked by the stepson, hailed by the Egyptian priests, made by the sculptors and ordered by the Pharaoh. Here are the art movers who meet the Sphinx when she comes to New York City by boat. They oh so carefully load, cushion, and secure the statue and 13 boxes of pieces in their truck. By avoiding bumpy roads and tight turns, they safely deliver to the museum the Sphinx that was released by the Department of Antiquities, identified by the archeologist, busted up by the stepson, honored by the Egyptian priests, created by the sculptor, and ordered by the Pharaoh so long ago. Here is the Metropolitan Museum's curator who knows a lot about ancient Egypt. He can read and write hieroglyphs, tell a fake when he sees one, usually, and estimate how old a piece is just by looking at it. He plans where to place and how to exhibit the Sphinx that was delivered to New York by the art movers, made available by the Department of Antiquities, unearthed by the archeologist, destroyed by the stepson, celebrated by the Egyptian priests, shaped by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh. 
Here are the museum's conservators, who with the help from the curator, finish putting together the hundreds of broken fragments and fill in with plaster the many gaps and holes. Back in one piece after 3,000 years is the Sphinx of Hatshepsut that was eagerly awaited by the curator, greeted by the art movers, cleared by the Department of Antiquities, turned up by the archeologist, crushed and buried by the stepson, seen by the Egyptian priests, conceived by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh a long, long time ago. Here are the museum's riggers who operate the heavy equipment needed to haul to the floor the partially restored seven ton sphinx that was put back together by the conservators, researched by the curator, secured by the art movers, supervised by the Department of Antiquities, found in a pit by the archeologist, left to be forgotten by the stepson, observed by the Egyptian priests, produced by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh. Here is the registrar who notates for the museum's records the newest acquisition, its measurements, weight, date, and origin. Using red oil paint in a teeny tiny brush, he paints the official number 31.3.166 on the Sphinx that was hauled by the riggers, assembled by the conservators, studied by the curator, loaded with care by the art movers, sent on its way by the Department of Antiquities, dug up by the archeologist, shattered to bits by the stepson, respected by the Egyptian priests, fabricated by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh. Here's the artist who paints the plaster filled parts to look like the granite, but not exactly. It's important to be able to see which parts are real and which have been painted to look real. Almost ready for public viewing is the Sphinx that was minutely numbered by the registrar, positioned just so by the riggers, mended by the conservators, planned for exhibit by the curator, moved to the museum by the art movers, overseen by the Department of Antiquities, brought to light by the archeologist, demolished by the stepson, gazed at by the Egyptian priests, executed by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh. Here's the photographer who takes the official photographs for the museum's records. She takes some shots from this angle, some from that, some in black and white, and some in color of the Sphinx that was retouched by the artist, assigned a number by the registrar, hoisted and lowered by the riggers, rebuilt by the conservators, examined by the curator, transported to New York by the art movers, surveyed by Egypt's Department of Antiquities, discovered in the 1920s by the archeologist, wrecked by the stepson, looked at by the Egyptian priests, formed by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh in ancient Egypt. Here is the docent who loves museums, has read all about ancient Egypt and likes to talk to visitors about the Sphinx that was documented by the photographer, painted and restored by the artist, officially numbered by the registrar, carefully lifted by the riggers, repaired by the conservators, welcomed by the curator, packed and unpacked by the art movers, approved by the Department of Antiquities, uncovered by the archeologist, broken by the stepson, prized by the Egyptian priests, carved by the sculptor and ordered by the Pharaoh. And at last is ready to be visited by you.